We're delighted to welcome the godfather of green in the UK, Sir Jonathan Porritt. He brought the Green Party to its initial prominence and founded the Sustainable Development Charity Forum for the Future. Please give him a huge welcome. These are 17 goals that apply to every single person on planet Earth. The MDGs, the Millennium Development Goals, were just for the developing and emerging economies. This covers the whole of humankind. And it covers the whole spectrum of everything that makes our lives good, whether it's to do with health, whether it's to do with sanitation, with education, with communities, with technology, with climate, with energy, and so on. So it embraces the whole of what it is that makes life work for people today. The ratification process, which Jan mentioned was going to be so crucial, I think will happen far faster than you can imagine. This agreement was signed in New York just three weeks ago. Many countries acknowledged they were going to ratify immediately, including, and I want you to take account of this, including China. China wasn't waiting for the United States to say it's going to ratify. China was saying, we're going to ratify because this is critical to the well-being of everybody, not just in China, but across the world. 2015, pretty important in other ways. Highest ever level of new investment in clean energy. And don't forget, every year now, more money goes into clean energy than it goes into those wretched hydrocarbons, into coal, oil, and gas. 329 billion. We need roughly a trillion dollars a year a trillion dollars a year to do this accelerated transition. So we're a third of the way there, which isn't too bad. Okay, now this is the real story. As Jan was saying, we don't need to worry too much about individual technologies. This is an extraordinary story unfolding in our midst right now. This incredible creativity being brought to bear by designers and engineers in particular to improve the technologies on which we depend. And what you have here are the basic building blocks of what will make for a sustainable energy system. It's not just the individual technology, it's the system. Efficiency is critical. Without that, we can't do what we need to do. Then you've got renewables. Then you've got what most people would consider to be a really pedestrian and boring area of technology improvement, namely storage. Probably the future of humankind depends as much on this as on anything else. And then you've got more exciting stuff about grids, EVs, and so on. Not one company today that you've heard from has really nailed just how fast and how deep this decarbonization process is going to go. This is the good news for all of you. This isn't just about energy. In every single one of these fields, I mean literally every single one, whether you're talking water, waste, manufacturing, healthcare, different kinds of land use, every single field, of human endeavor today, this innovation pipeline is just bulging. It's actually hard to keep up with the speed with which new technologies are emerging. It isn't really markets that are the problem. Actually, it's poorly regulated, corrupt, and unaccountable markets that are the problem. And each of those three things, poor regulation, lack of accountability, and corruption, are actually more to do with governments not doing the job they should be doing to make markets deliver for all of us. So we celebrate the fact that companies want to help make this stuff happen. You need a little bit of anger because of the very poor job that we have done around this whole set of issues. The fact that we've left so much of the heavy lifting for a sustainable world to you because we didn't really do very much. So whatever else you do, you absolutely need to go on holding us to account until that day when we will have got it all sorted out together.